up, it's your girl Megan Good, and you are checking out That Grape Juice. Megan, it's so great to see you. Thank you. Uh, welcome to London. <laughs> Flying visit, so really happy that we managed to grab some time with you. Yay. And uh, how exciting. You know, you've had such a fantastic career on screen, and you. um, you're here not only on screen, but with your directorial debut as a director yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, what inspired that shift? Oh man, um, well first of all, thank you. I'm super, super excited to be here. Um, and for me, I think the thing that inspired the shift was, it actually happened initially by accident. Mm -hmm. um, I, was my, I was helping my cousin direct, uh, I'm sorry, produce a music video, and he said, you know, well, I would love to have this one director, and I was like, I'll, I'll make it happen. He was like, well, what if it doesn't happen? And I was like, well then I'll direct it, haha. -ha. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get the director, and so I ended up directing it, and um, the first day, I really felt like I was legit gonna throw up, and I was like, oh, I have wow. no idea idea what I'm doing and I'm so freaked out and then within 20-30 minutes I realized that I did know exactly what I was doing I had watched it my entire life and I did have a point of view um, and a way that I saw things visually and I fell in love with it immediately and then from then I just directed a bunch of videos and shorts and um, this came about because we actually had a different director and in the 11th hour you know we were waiting for the money to come through and she ended up saying okay I don't know if it's really gonna happen so she accepted another project and the money came through um, and me and Tam were like all right you know we had talked about once doing this and um, maybe it's what God wants us to do and so I prayed about it for a month and I just wanted to make sure that it was the right thing because I knew it was gonna kind of consume my whole world and, um, and God was just like yeah so I was like okay and I'm super proud of it and super excited about it and excited to do more about it I more of it because I feel like for me I've I've had such a long career that um, I don't want to do things I'm not excited about. Mm. And as a result, um, I say no a lot more to stuff as an actress. And I really love going to set as a director and no hair, no makeup, it's not about me. And I'm just serving the project and I'm serving the actors. And something about that is just appealing and I love it, so. Title of the film, if not now, when? It, it speaks to that as well, you <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah. Um, but tell me a little bit more about the film. I understand that sisterhood and second chances are yeah. at the heart of it. Yeah. Um, what more can you tell us? Yeah, um, it's definitely the biggest thing that sticks out to me is that you're worthy. You deserve God's best. And whatever you have to do um, to, to let yourself know that and to pursue that with all your heart and your spirit, um, that's what you should do. And to have sisters who love you and respect you and want the best for you and see that sometimes even when you can't see it in yourself, that to me is at the, at the core of what I feel that we're trying to say. Um, and when I say I feel, I say because there's two of us, um, Tamara Bass, who wrote it, we both directed it together. Um, and for me, it was really like a call back to those movies like Waiting to Exhale and the women of Brewster Place and set it off where I would see those movies as a young woman and I thought I've never seen women represented in this way and I've never seen un unique stories told this way and that to me was really really special and to see women of color in those roles and these unique stories so with this film it was really about um, what is our perspective as women period and then as women of color and how do we tackle these issues and these subjects that don't get shown in, in t TV or film as often and if it does it gets, it's kind of like touched upon but not really dealt with and so um, yeah it's just super super exciting and something I'm super passionate about. And as a female director you know you'll be able to and, and your partner you know be able yeah. to tell the story in a way through women's eyes yeah. women of color in a way that another director perhaps wouldn't be able to do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so um, there are a number of people number of other actors who, like yourself, are adding strings to their bow um, yeah. and they're, they're getting behind the camera as well. Um, are there any inspirations for you or of other people that have done that? Um, I think Casey Lemons was a real inspiration to me and I, I didn't I knew it at the time, but I didn't know from what perspective or how greatly that inspiration would grow as I got older. She was the first director that I worked with that, um, well, F. Gary Gray was the first director I worked with. I had, I had two speaking lines on Friday, but she was the first director that I worked with where I had a leading role as a child, and I was being developed and I was being molded. Um, and the way that she spoke to me, she spoke a different language because she was an actress. And, um, and I'd never seen a woman director. 
director and I'd never seen a black woman director. And so that really stuck with me because in my mind, that was the norm. I didn't realize that it wasn't something that happened all the time. And I didn't realize um, how lucky I was to have that be my first experience and that create my world of what it should be and what it could be. Um, and I've always carried that with me. So now as a woman, I look back and I look forward. I'm so thankful for that experience. And I see everything that she does and continues to do. Um, and then, you know, I, I worked with Ava on um, Delivers from Eva before she was a director. And so um, it's, it's, it's pretty incredible to see these journeys and, and to be a part of that in some way, shape or form. It's all of our journey, you know, and so. Yeah. And, and what you're doing now with this film as well is, is adding to the landscape of films that are representing blackness in a way that we haven't seen for such a long time. Yeah. And, and actually what's happening is we're seeing them more, more regularly um, yeah. over the last couple of years. You know, there have been some fantastic movies. Yeah. Um, so what, do you, what would you like to see change which will mm -hmm. continue um, the momentum, if you like? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, the biggest misconception and something that always stuck out to me as a young person, I, I would go into auditions, you know, 15, 16 years old, and I would audition for the lead. And I would be told outright, like, man, you are great, but we can't hire you for the lead because you're black and you're not going to sell overseas, but we'll give you the best friend role and we'll beef it up and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that was a constant theme that I always heard. And so there's always this misconception that if you come out of the States, you're not going to be supported, which is... 1,000% not true. I sit here right now as an example of seeing what that support is. We have a sold out screening. I mean, I was like so excited Insta Instagramming last night. I was like, oh, we're sold out. Um, and I think just, just changing that stereotype and changing that conversation um, to a more true conversation, which is we are complex human beings. And it's not always just about a comedy. It's not always just about a way that we are, are presented um, in, in the mainstream. And that's what's really exciting about ABFF and ABFF Global is that, you know, they are showing every different side of us. They are showing how complex and how incredible we are. And um, to be able to have a place where that can live and breathe and begin to grow and then go out into the world, it needs that. If it doesn't start here, it doesn't start. Yeah, so um, it's, it's really incredible. So. Yeah, so I was going to ask you then um, about being a platform such as uh, the American Black Film Festival. Yeah. And, um, you know, it is a, a really exciting time. Um, so, you know, coming here for this, yeah. how, how are you feeling about that overall? Amazing. <laughs> you know, I think when I, I was a kid, I think, you know, you have experiences. Um, I grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood, and so I dealt with a lot of racism and um, a fair amount of bullying. And um, when I fixed my mind a certain way, I began to have a certain experience. And I think as a child, you just, you, sometimes you don't see some things. And I think as an adult, as I've made my way, Every single one of those journeys have made me a part of who I am and has made me passionate about certain things that I'm passionate about. And so for me, at this junction in my life and in my career, it's about giving back. Yeah. And it's about paving the way for the little brown girl behind me so that she doesn't have to work as hard as I had to work. The same way that Miss Ruby Dee or Angela Bassett um, or Cicely Tyson did for us or Halle Berry. Yeah. Um, and so for me, you know, getting um, to be a part of something like this, not just as a filmmaker, but just to support the the effort of changing things and changing um, the face of things and creating more opportunity an opportunity that is a little bit more realistic to mm -hmm. who we are as human beings that's super important to me yeah well I, I love everything that you that you're saying representation is so so important and uh, you know the fact that you're here telling stories that you're um, both on screen that you're directing you're shaping this and doing so in in this environment as well is just is fantastic so I continue to take my hat off to you um, the way that we're consuming our media is changing all of the time so yeah. platforms like um, like Netflix with the recent launch of Apple TV. Yeah. Um, what does that say to you in regards to um, being an actress and yeah. now director as well? Um, it's exciting, you know, because there's all these different ways for, for people to view content. Um, BET just started a streaming service mm -hmm. and super excited about that. And so for me, it's just, it's more avenues to get things out there and make sure that people get a chance to see them in all different ways. Um, and I hope it continues to grow. Um, I don't know, like, good or bad what that might do, but in terms of, from where I sit right now, any way that you can get it out there that people can begin to see certain things is exciting for me. Yeah. And 
talking of exciting, this is a fantastic moment that you're having, so yeah. you've got to celebrate this moment. But in terms of the future, see yourself doing many more, um, oh, yeah. much more directing. Oh, what, yeah. what's, what's next for you? Um, I'm not sure what the next one is yet because it, it is, it's very consuming yeah. um, when you're doing it you from start to finish. Yourself. Yeah, you have to enjoy it, you have to be yeah. present, um, and, and it's a lot from start to finish. Mm. And so for me, I'm just looking for what is the next thing that I'm truly excited about, mm. um, that I'm willing to shut down everything else in my world outside of my husband um, so that I can really kind of dig into this and um, I haven't found the right thing yet but but you know I'm, I'm excited to see what that's going to be. So. Well we will be with you every step of the way here at That Grape Juice so thank you so much for having a chat with us and congratulations again. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. In pop culture, especially African American pop culture and now everybody's going to know about it. What was the and he's got a story to uh, wearing platform shoes. <laughs> Because, you know, my feet are in their 50s now, so a platform shoe is not made for a foot in the...